I'm Edie Lush and I've stepped outside the Hub Culture Pavilion, the Ice House here in Davos. It's 2017. Delighted now to be joined by Eric Brynjolfsson. He's a professor at MIT and also author of the New York Times bestseller, The Second Machine Age. Now you've done some interesting work on innovation, mm -hmm. investing in innovation. Now tell me why you've done this work. Well, we're seeing some tectonic changes happening in the economy. Um, over the past 10 years, we've seen more disruption in the economy, and a lot of that's driven by technology, especially in digital technologies and most recently artificial intelligence. As you know, machines are beginning to learn how to drive cars themselves. Mm -hmm. I can't wait. Yeah, <laughs> they can talk and, and understand us, you know, not perfectly, but getting better. Mm -hmm. um, they're beginning to see better than humans can in many mm -hmm. applications. So this is a big shift for humanity and for machines, but it's also having some big effects on the economy. I mean, the two big ones are that on one hand, we're creating more wealth than ever before. More millionaires, more billionaires, uh, GDP is an all-time high. But at the same time, a lot more people are being left behind. Median income, that's the income at the 50th percentile, is lower now in the United States and other advanced countries than it was back in the year 2000. So at least half the population isn't participating in all this wondrous wealth that's being created. And that's creating challenges. And we've seen in the recent elections that a lot of people are angry about that. They feel like the system isn't working for them. So what have you done about it? Well, one of the things we're trying to do is not only set out a set of policy proposals, but we also want to get businesses and individuals directly engaged. So we launched something called the Inclusive Innovation Challenge at MIT. The Inclusive Innovation Challenge is a $1 million prize that we give to companies, individuals, and organizations that are using technology to create value for the many, not just the few. So instead of just having a, a winner-take-all technology that enriches a, a, a small group of billionaires, we want to re recognize people who have figured out how to use technology to engage lots and lots of people. And who won? Well, we've had the first competition last September, and we were just delighted. We had over 330 entrants, and I read most of them, and honestly, any one of them I would have been proud to mm -hmm. anoint as a winner. Um, let me talk about two of them in particular that did win the prize. Um, one is Iora Health. Um, this is a company that provides coaches that work alongside human doctors and they're networked with the technology so that when the doctor makes a recommendation to a patient, instead of the patient just going home and then probably not following through on the diet and exercise and, and pills and all the other things they're supposed to do, these coaches kind of work with them. Mm -hmm. And over the next few months, they make sure that they comply with the program that the doctor recommended. The end result is that the patients end up being a lot healthier, costs end up being about 30% lower, and the doctor has less of a workload in terms of trying to follow up with the patients. Mm -hmm. So it's a win for everybody. These coaches don't have to have medical degrees, but they do have a lot of emotional intelligence. Mm -hmm. You know, they're keyed into how you motivate people. And so this has been a very effective program. And do they do it digitally as well? So is it all via the phone or? It's multiple ways. Mm -hmm. So the network helps the human to human contact but there's also digital communications. But part of it is keeping the person in the loop. Most of us aren't that motivated by having a robot tell us, hey, it's time to eat healthy. Yeah. But we get a lot more motivated by having a human, at least one that has good emotional intelligence, connect with us. It's interesting, because when I actually have spoken to people about artificial intelligence and health, one of the first things I learned was that actually, if you know that you're speaking to artificial intelligence, you're more likely to be more honest about uh, about your health, which I was surprised about. Yes, that is true. That um, in many cases, people feel more comfortable opening up with a, a robot therapist mm -hmm. or describing the symptoms. But that's partly because you don't have that connection with the robot. Mm -hmm. And in terms of motivation, it goes the other way around. Right. If you want to get somebody to kind of coach you, you know, having a pep talk from a robot just isn't the same. <laughs> I can't imagine it. Tell no. me briefly about the other company. The other company is just amazing. It's, it's called 99 Degrees Custom. It's an old mill town, only about 30 miles from MIT, but it, it's a world apart. It's actually a, a relatively poor town. It was, it was a big success about 200, 150 years ago. But since then, it's fallen on hard times. But now um, 99 Degrees Custom is bringing manufacturing back. And the way they're doing it is they're using a much more advanced kind of manufacturing that involves um, personalized clothing manufacturing. So that the people who are working there, they have more high skill jobs, higher wage jobs, and um, you end up having clothing made in America that used to be made overseas. Mm -hmm. um, it is in combination with some very advanced machinery, so it requires some level of sophistication 
and it's been a win-win for the customer, uh, for the uh, investors in, in uh, 99 Degrees Hustom, but also a whole lot of workers who previously didn't have jobs. And these are wearable technologies, or? No, these are um, actually just different kinds of clothes, uh -huh. but they're custom made to fit you exactly the way you want it. So instead of having, you know, uh, you know, a million t-shirts that are all identical, yeah. everyone is custom made. Beautiful, thank you so much for stopping by, Eric. Really appreciate your time. It's been my pleasure. I'm Edie Lush.